Cam. The big man. What's up? How we doing? What's up, my man? How you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm good. Just hanging out in Pittsburgh. Hey, listen. First of all, just being one, I'm a huge Steeler fan. I've been a Steeler fan since I was since Terry Bradshaw and Rocky Blyer and that whole crew when I was younger with the old electronic football set back in the day, <laughs> <laughs> playing the game. And then now, you, of course, you're there, but the Ohio State connection we have is always something to talk about. So it's a pleasure to have you on. It's um, We've been sitting here in the studio talking about the big news. I don't know if you saw it or not, but with the trade with Buffalo and Stephon Diggs down to Houston, how does that reshape kind of the AFC in, in your mind? Well, I wish you would have got traded to the NFC. I'll say that. <laughs> you know, uh, Diggs is always a problem. But uh, you look at what the Texans are doing. You got him. Um, you got Nico Collins. You got uh, Tank Dell. Uh, and then you got our Buckeye in the middle with uh, C.J. Stroud. And I just think um, they got a lot of pieces. And you can't sleep on the Joe Mixon pickup, too, mm. because – um, I think it really balances that team out where they can run or pass. Um, and the questions just come on defense. And now you just added um, another player to, you know, what was already a good team going into this year. But, uh, you know, it, the future is bright for the Houston Texans. What, what does adding Stefan with CJ, and it's like, what, what does that do for him as a quarterback? I think it provides a guy who is reliable. Um, you know, you look at all the top quarterbacks in this league, all they have is a security blanket and a wide receiver. Um, someone they can go to in those tough moments, someone that can find the ins and outs. Uh, you know, Diggs, as soon as he get there, he better be spending a lot of time with C.J. Stroud because um, if they can create a connection like he had with Josh Allen, man, it's going to create a lot of problems for the AFC South. So watching CJ last year, were you surprised that he was able to kind of make that adjustment? And if not, what kind of problems does he causes does he cause to opposing defenses? Well, you think I, I thought CJ was already talented. You know, if you watch that Georgia game, he had um, where all the questions need to, to be answered, and I thought he did an amazing job on the national championship game. So in the season. Um, it wasn't that surprising. I thought he was very calm, cool, collected, playing against top talent. Um, and then, you know, it's not like he's ever rushed. It feels like he's very patient with his game. Um, he's going to take what the defense gives him. If you take away his, you know, his top option, um, he knows where to find the soft spots. Um, and so I looked at him as a more complete quarterback rather than one guy who stares at down one one target and can't move off of it. He's a guy who you take that away, I know where to go with my next read. So um, he's having a lot of success now, and he's making everybody look right. Well, go from a up-and-coming quarterback to an experienced one that you advocated to get in Pittsburgh with Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. Just, it, it, what does Russell bring to the table for the Steelers next year? Well, I think – you look at Russ, um, and the one thing I really wanted, um, I, I, we were losing quarterbacks left and right. You know, Mason Rudolph had just left. Um, Mitch Trubisky was gone. Um, I thought there was going to be a competition there uh, between him and Kenny. Uh, but now going forward, um, you just look for the leadership he's had. Um, a guy who's been in Seattle, who's won games, uh, won a Super Bowl already, um, didn't have the, the best time in Denver, but – uh, you know, I think he's a hungry guy who's ready to prove a lot of people wrong. But I think on the offensive side of the ball, we have so many great weapons and, you know, some of them are younger. So uh, having a, a more established guy who um, has been through it is going to benefit the group. But but does does Russell have to be the Seattle Russell Wilson or a different version of himself that kind of fits into the mold of what Mike Tomlin and, and the offense needs from him? You know, I think it can be a blend of two, of, the, of both. Uh, you look at what our defense can do. Um, you know, we can score points um, on defense. We can have an opportunistic special teams. Um, I think it's about growth uh, and whether it's, you know, uh, adjusting to the needs of the game or, you know, understanding that, hey, we might need you to go on a run a little bit. We might need you to score some points. Yeah, we want that, but – uh, I think he can have a balance game to game and, and excel at that. You know, 
not many people beat Patrick Mahomes last year, uh, but Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos did last year. Uh, and, you know, I know it's not one guy that gets it done, but I you got to think uh, Russ has done it in this game and knows how to beat top competition. This is what's always intriguing to me, just, again, being a huge Steeler fan. When I say the name Mike Tomlin, that means what to you? Um, consistent leadership. Uh, a guy that um, is going to challenge the group, hold the group accountable, um, and there's never a message that uh, doesn't either resonate with you uh, or gets misconceived. Um, you know, I, I know what I need to do in my job, um, and he's let me know from day one. And we've only expanded on that. And I think for every player, uh, it's about uh, living up to the standard he sets. Um, and then, you know, through that, trying to rain that confetti over your head. You know what I found, too, that in the, the best coaches are the ones that are not afraid to tell their best players what they need to do. You know, the, the open honesty. And sometimes honesty can be one-sided in one way and not taken that way. But because of, I think, the way Mike gives it to you and his demeanor, you may not like it at some times, but guys are more willing to accept that because of, of who he is as a man and as a coach. And, and is there an instance, a time, maybe last year, when you were trying to figure out how to get back to winning and getting over 500 that you can point to where Mike, it, he was just Mike Tomlin at his best that kind of rallied the troops? You know, I think I think we just lost. It was either after the AZ game or the New England game. He came in and, you know, um, he laid out what needed to be done. Um, and, you know, he, he talked about his message and he was just like, I'm not going to switch up. I'm not going to say we need to do anything different. You know, we just need to execute better. Um, I'm going to preach you st the same stuff I told you in September. Um, I'm not going to change it up because we're in November. Uh, and then because of that, or December, I think because of that, you know, he ended with and saying, we're going to win these games and get into the playoffs. Like, with that consistent message, it allows everybody to get back focused. Uh, you know, it's not a, a lack of, you know, um, guys thinking for themselves, oh, I got to be special. Oh, I got to do something out of character. No, do do what we've done. Do what we've done to get to this point. Um you know, I think sometimes you can get to a a, a war cry of "I got to do me, I got to do my best, right. I got to be outside of what I've I've accomplished." Um, and my T does a great job of just centering it back to the group and saying, "No, just do what we prescribe you to do. Do what makes <laughs> us." Work. And I think it allows us to get back to what we've been doing pretty well. Hey, Cam T T J here. How you doing, bro? How you doing, TJ? Good. You know, we, we we Chris and I got a chance to hang out with you uh, at the uh, Kelsey Brothers uh, Super Bowl party. Yeah, this year. Uh, <laughs> got to see you again. That was a good time. Good time. I, I kind of marked out about how big of a fan of your dad I was to you there. So I hope I wasn't bugging yes, you sir. during the party. Uh, we talked about you have a big addition on the offensive side of the ball with Russ coming in. Talk to us about the huge addition that you guys on the defensive side got with Patrick Queen moving over from the Ravens. How do you think he's going to fit in with Steeler Nation? Well, you know, I, I think it's funny. I think I read on Twitter, you know, he views himself as a villain now. I'm like, <laughs> nah, bro, you're just a hero now. <laughs> You've been a villain all this time. You just became a hero. Right? So, you know, I'm excited. Uh, I think uh, you look at his game, man, he comes downhill. Um, you know, I, I remember I was poking fun. My little brother plays on the team. So mm -hmm. uh, him and Pat were going back and forth in the game. And so I was like, oh, he gave it to you on that play. Uh, and so <laughs> now to see it the other side, I'm like, Connor, you better be ready because he's going to give it to you again during practice. Every so, um, you know, I think having uh, a guy like that who can play the run, play the pass, he's a three down linebacker who allows the team to just be more flexible and more versatile in our approach. Um, and man, I just love the way he just, he's going to meet dudes in the hole. And, you know, we got some great running backs in our, our division. You know, you got Nick Chubb, you uh, got Derek Henry now. Um, and so we got to have a linebacker that's willing to stick his face in the fan, if you know what I mean. No doubt. I, I was TJ Watt, man, just talk to me about that. This, just his, 
overall aggression, his knowledge, his IQ, his motor. I mean, when I watch him play, I'm inspired. And I was a big football player growing up, and I played defensive end, not to that level. But I kind of got smart because it was too cold in Ohio, man. I went inside <laughs> to the gym, man. I was like, man, it's too cold. But I loved it. But watching TJ and how the defense kind of revolves around him, just how special it is to play with him. You know, I think TJ, the thing that, the thing that sticks out with TJ, um, he's got a serial killer approach. Man, he doesn't say a lot, but um, he lets his play do the talking. Um, and, you know, you see the energy on Sundays, but uh, everything is so calculated. Everything is about no wasted steps and no wasted movements. Um, and it's, I just think his technique is flawless. Um, and, you know, he's always trying to get better. What can I do extra? What are we looking at? Um, you know, he's, he, I love when he brings his little knowledge, um, bombs in where he's talking about, Hey, I've got a key of what, what, you know, how much time is on the clock. Uh, and when he looks at the clock, he knows he can jump the count. And so having that type of guy who takes that everything into, you know, consideration when he's on the field, Man, he is a complete player. Um, I, I think he was robbed of defensive player of the year. Mm -hmm. uh, I know Aaron Donald said, um, you know, he was robbed a couple years ago. But, man, that dude is a complete player. And, you know, he's the best defensive player in our league right now. This is so this is going to year 13, right? 14. 14. 14. Don't let me don't make take what year away. So you're the old man <laughs> in the locker room then, huh? Is that it? Is, uh, yeah. Are you the hey, old? Hey, but Russ is older than me, so I'm kind of liking that. Now. <laughs> so, but, but if you look back at it, 2011 drafted. Uh, he, how special did did is the career like kind of where you thought it would be, and how quickly did those 13 now going into the 14 years go by for you? Oh man, they, they gone gone by by pretty fast. Um, you know, when I first got here, uh, I didn't get the opportunity to start right away, so. You know, I was the guy, you know, watching these future Hall of Famers uh, compete. And, you know, I just wanted to be a sponge in the room. Um, and, and, you know, I've always appreciated those moments because they made me better. Uh, it, it made me work on my friends. It made me understand that I got a lot, a lot more to do. Um, and through that, I think I've become a better player because of it. And um, I've just always tried to get better every year. And, you know, now I'm at a point in my career where I'm a bridge from the, you know, the 2011 team mm -hmm. to this now team where I can, you know, share some stuff about my time. Uh, but that doesn't take away from the hunger. <laughs> right. Um, you know, I still think I got a lot more in the tank and a lot more to prove. And, you know, it's about getting to that mountaintop and having a chance to win these Super Bowls. I love it. We need one more because I got some New England Patriots fans, and I, I always call it six bird Steelers, you know, for the six rings. And I say we got because I claim it, you know, with right. us. But you know what's interesting here before we go? I want to talk to you. You talk about passing it forward, and you mentioned you have your brother on the mm -hmm. team, which is it has to be special. What do you give to him in regards to longevity? I know he's at a different position, but at the same time, he's in the league and he's on the team. Kind of what advice do you give your brother in regards to kind of how to stay the course and extend his career throughout the NFL? Yeah, you know, I think when you first get in this league, you think you're invincible um, and you are quickly reminded that you were not. Uh, but I think about taking care of your body, uh, doing the little things off the field, uh, spending time with it, not being the first guy gone. Um, I'm always preaching these things to my little brother. Uh, you know, I like to think I'm the cliff notes uh, to this for him. And so I'm giving him every bit of knowledge I've got, um, you know, putting him on a, a great plan to just keep being successful. Uh, but some of it he's got to experience for himself. You know, I, I didn't always have somebody looking out for my best interest. So, <laughs> you know, sometimes yeah. it's like, yeah, you experience that moment you know it's gonna make you better so uh it's a it's a balance between the two but um i love seeing the course he's on the journeys on uh because i think he's well equipped for it well listen my man look best of luck hopefully i would uh, i want to get to a sealers game at some point this year try to come get through. there come, come through, through holla at my boy get a jersey signed or whatever got, you. got, got you. that um congratulations again on the warden payton man of the year Warden. i know that's probably one of the biggest accolades outside of winning a super bowl that says a lot about you your family what you're doing right. for your community man stay healthy much success 
we see you down the line, my man. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. I got to get an O State jersey too. Oh, that's I, what I, oh I got you, bro. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna try to get the gray one. Throw back the gray one. Yes, that's what I need. <laughs> that's what I need. All right, brother. Appreciate you, my man. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, twelve to three Eastern, for free. 